Hello, everybody. My name is Brian Mercier. I'm a professional Catholic speaker. I'm a Catholic apologist. I'm a retreat leader, and I'm a Catholic author. And I'm loving giving you this series on prayer, spirituality, and coming closer to God. So far, we've talked about a lot of things. And in last week's episode, we talked about vocal prayer, how to talk to God, how to intercede, how to pray, and to make it more effective in your life. But I'm really excited about this week's topic because we're going to be discussing mental prayer, or what's called prayer of the heart. Some people call it meditative prayer, and we'll eventually get to contemplative prayer. This is the quiet prayer. This is the deeper prayer. This is the exciting prayer because this is where you find God. This is where you meet God on a deeper level. This is where you meet God in an intimate way. This is the kind of prayer that if you practice it correctly, and you really get good at it, and you're able to sit in God's presence and just be with Him, this is the prayer where you will find so much peace, so much joy, so much love. You'll actually experience God's presence, God willing, and you'll even, like when you really get deep, you'll even be able to overcome your vices. You'll be able to overcome your bad habits. You'll be, even be able to overcome addictions. This prayer is incredibly powerful. And all of the saints in the Catholic Church say that mental prayer, this prayer of the heart, the deeper meditative prayer, is the prayer that helps us to grow spiritually and to grow in virtue really to grow in virtue. This is the type of prayer that saints also say that if you don't practice it, you remain spiritual midgets. In other words, we remain stunted in the spiritual life. If we only talk, 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 talk to God, and we only ask, 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 and we never go deeper, and we never listen, and we never get into that quiet prayer, then we remain stunted in the spiritual life, and we'll never come to know God, really know Him on a deeper level. We'll really not come to know Him in a way that's going to change us from the inside out and really make it uh, a really productive part of our spiritual life. And unfortunately, most Catholics, most Christians never get to this deeper prayer. So I think it's really important that we discuss it. And here we go. We're going to begin now. Before I get into it, though, I just want to quickly clear up a misconception that some people may have. Because there are other Eastern Oriental forms of quiet meditative prayer, such as Zen Buddhism, such as uh, Transcendental Meditation. And even in the Catholic circles, some Catholic circles today, there's something called Centering Prayer by Thomas Keating. These these are not the kind of meditative and contemplative prayers that we're talking about. These kind of prayers, which are not really prayer because Zen Buddhism doesn't even generally believe in God, they just try to empty the mind of all their thoughts. Emptying, 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 emptying until literally there's nothing left. They want to get us to a state of nothing, to a state of complete silence, complete zero, not even a single thought in your head. Transcendental meditation tries to do the same thing, and so does centering prayer. And in fact, we believe in God, and so we always want to have some thoughts in our minds. We always want to have at least God in our minds, even if our minds aren't working a lot. Even if they're very dormant, we never empty our minds completely. That is a false form of prayer. So with that being said, let's begin. In order to start this deeper prayer with God. There's four ways that I recommend putting yourself quietly into his presence. Four ways that'll help you visualize God and help you to just be in his presence with him. The first is sitting in a room, in a church, somewhere, and you imagine Jesus in a chair in front of you, or sitting on the floor in front of you, or standing in front of you, you actually visualize Jesus looking at you. You see his eyes, you see his smile, or you see his concerned look. You literally try to visualize him sitting there, and then just look at him. Practice just staring at him, really being aware of his presence in front of you. You could even, after you know practicing that, you could even talk to him right in front of you. And that's a very helpful visual way of being able to focus on God's presence around you. You can even take a picture of Jesus, one that's sentimental, one that really helps you to connect with God. You can use a picture to help you focus on God's presence and to think about him and where he is. A second way you can do this is to picture God in heaven looking down on you. Look at his 
eyes and look at his smile. Look at him looking down straight at you. And as often as you pray, as much as you pray, his focus is totally upon you. And even if you decide to go to vocal prayer and talk to God up in heaven, imagine him looking at you, having all of his focus on you and you having your focus on him. And in that way, you can make your prayer more real and more targeted to more to be more effective. The third way is to, and and the third and fourth way personally are my two favorite ways. And the saints really recommend these ways as well. The first is to sit in a floor, sit in a chair, sit in a church and close your eyes and just try as hard as you can to be aware of God's presence all around you. St. Francis de Sales once said that wherever birds fly, they encounter air. And so wherever we are, we can encounter the presence of God. And so whether you're sitting in a church, sitting in your home, sitting in your basement, wherever you are, sit and just focus on the presence of God around you. Psalm 4610 says to be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I'm God. So just be. And this is so hard, especially in the Western world, just to sit for two seconds without thinking about something. But it's a practice. You have to realize that you're going to have a thousand distractions. St. John of the Cross did. St. Teresa of Avila did. The greatest saints who came the closest to God had tons and tons of distractions at the beginning. And they said this is normal. So don't get upset about it. Just learn to put yourself in the practice of presence of God. For example, one guru from India I heard said that he could teach uh, children in India to meditate in complete silence and in complete focus for one hour. But he said he had a hard time teaching adults in the United States of America to te- to meditate even for five minutes without being distracted. So. The work is going to be difficult, but the payoff is wonderful. So focus on God's presence around you. And the fourth way is focus on God's presence within you. Focus on God's presence in you. God is in you. The Holy Spirit is in you. By your baptism, in your baptism, God is in you. So just sit, even in, when I'm in church, and I'm looking at the tabernacle, you can focus on Jesus in the tabernacle. That's one way. Or you could focus on his presence within you, anywhere you want, whether you're in the car, whether you're at work or whether you're at home, focus, learn to focus on his presence within you. This is the best thing you can do because then you bring God everywhere with you and you can always be focused. I mean, when you're washing the dishes, be aware of his presence around you. When you're vacuuming the house or when you're mowing the lawn or when you're at the beach, you can just take three seconds to go within and realize that God is with you. His presence is there. And that is when you start communing with him all the time. St. Paul says to pray without ceasing. And so this is one way we can do that is to bring God with us wherever we go. So sit in silence for five minutes a day and just try to focus on the presence of God within you. Don't try to do anything. Don't try to hear anything. Just work on focusing on God. Be there out of love for him. Remember we talked about the king's court and we talked about the king up there and you don't just go to the king and get whatever you want. He has to draw you. So the more you just sit in God's presence and focus on him in love, just realize that he's focusing on you in love as well. He's he's looking at you and thinking about you while you're looking at him and thinking about him. Absolutely crucial and necessary if you want to go for a deeper life, a deeper prayer life. And one book that I would recommend, including the not including the book that I'm writing on prayer and spirituality right now, but there is a book that I would recommend called A Fire Within. And it's a very deep book. There's another book called Prayer Primer, both by the same author. And these books will teach you to start praying, to learn how to pray, and to go through all of these steps more effectively. Once we've done this, once we've allowed ourselves to come into God's presence and just be still, learn just to focus on him more. There are two types of prayer of the heart, two types of infused prayer. That's what it's called, infused prayer. The first is meditative prayer, where we actively meditate ponder and reflect on different things in our life. So for example, you might reflect on how am I doing in my life? You sit down for 20 minutes in your room, in a church, somewhere quiet, in your prayer space, and you think for 10 or 20 minutes, maybe for a few minutes before you go to bed every night, how am I doing? How did this day go? 
and reflect on your day. What did you do good? What did you do bad? What do you need to work on? Maybe you want to meditate or reflect on uh, something that you're struggling with, a couple sins that you're working on. Maybe you have a temper. Maybe you have to work on gossip or lust or anger or something else. These things you can sit and reflect on. So for example, I mean, these will really help you to overcome your faults and failings. So let's say that you have a temper, just for example, and you always lose your patience with people. Sit down for 10 minutes and think over the last couple days, when was the last time I lost my temper? When was the last time I got impatient? Why did it happen? What caused it to happen? And if I was in that situation again, what would I do differently? How could I have reacted differently? How can I react more lovingly? See, these will really help you to get to the root of the problems in your life and help you to overcome them. Meditation is so powerful. Other ways we can meditate is by reading a part of the Bible and reflecting on it and seeing how it applies to our life or another spiritual book. Or we can take aspects of thinking about heaven, thinking about hell, thinking about how we really don't want to go there because it's a bad place, and are we on the path to heaven? If you dropped dead right now, would you be ready to meet God? Would you be ready for Judgment Day if you dropped dead right now? That's something we want to meditate on. That's something we want to reflect on. If we're not ready, what would we want to change? If God gave you one week to live, what would you want to change? What would you want to do differently? What would you want to, how would you want to be different? When you, if you die, how do you want people to remember you? How do you want people to remember you? These are the things that we want to think about. Also, you could think about, just say, aspects of Jesus' life, his death and resurrection. I'll give you one example of how you can meditate deeply. Take Jesus on the cross. Before he even got to the cross, they whipped him with cords and metal and shards, and they tore all his skin off. They put a crown of thorns, one to three inch thorns on his head. And then they nailed him to a cross with eight to 10 inch nails, huge nails that they pounded through his wrists and feet. Now, if you go into a meditation time, think about what that's like. Imagine yourself, put yourself at the place in time of Jesus. Put yourself there, you're looking at him at the cross. Imagine you there. What, is it, what does it sound like? to hear the nails going through his wrists and his feet? What does it sound like to hear him cry out for mercy into his father for help? What does it feel like to see him going through it? What does it sound like? Are other people yelling at him, screaming at him, cursing at him, spitting at him? What is the scene? I try to imagine every last detail. And sometimes this will be very difficult and you only can do it for a few minutes. Sometimes God will give you his grace and he will infuse his grace and life and spirit in you. And you'll come out 20 minutes later with this breathtaking, life-changing meditation that completely transformed the way you think about Jesus and it increases your love for him. At the beginning, we do all the work. We think, we reflect, we ponder. But if you practice this a lot, here's the deal. God steps in. Somewhere along the line, God starts stepping in with little infusions here and there. And he'll give you little breakthroughs and you'll see things you never saw before. You'll understand things the way you never understood them before. And eventually, if you keep with it, God will infuse his life into you. He will start taking over your meditations. One time I went into a meditations on Ephesians 5. It said, husbands, love your wife as Christ loves the church. So I said, okay, I got to do that. So how can I love my wife as Jesus loved the church? Well, how did Jesus even love the church? Well, he was completely loving to her. He was faithful to her. He, uh, he always forgave her. He was always there for her unconditionally. He was infinitely kind. I mean, I was going through all of these things and I thought that I was praying for five minutes, but I apparently went really deep because God infused his life in me. I came out of this prayer one hour later, and I literally only thought it was for five minutes. Another example is when we pray the rosary. The rosary is vocal prayer and it's meditative prayer vocal and meditative. So if you're just saying Hail Marys, it's not going to do so much. Even the Blessed Virgin Mary said that. The primary aspect of the rosary is a meditation on the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, reflecting on his life as you ask Mary to pray for you and help you to imitate that life. So for example, if you're meditating on the passion of Jesus, on the fifth sorrowful mystery, or if you're on the crowning of thorns, and you have this deep meditation going on, you just can't get enough of it, but 
the Hail Marys are distracting you and you just keep having to go back to the prayers, stop. Stop praying the prayers and just go with the meditation. The whole goal of prayer is union with God. It's a relationship with God. And so if the prayers are distracting you from going deeper with God, stop the prayers and go to the better half, the meditative part. See, that's when God can infuse that in us. When God's working in this prayer, he does all the work. Your mind kind of ceases and he gives you the thoughts. He gives you the reflections. He gives you everything. And it just keeps going and going and it's easy and it's life-changing. And you feel an intense peace and joy within you that really confirms that God was there. So this is the transition from meditative prayer to infused contemplative prayer. Contemplative prayer is when God fully infuses his life into you. Your mind kind of goes still, goes dormant. Um, it's, it doesn't stop working. It doesn't go like Zen or centering prayer to a place of nothing. It's just still. And we're totally focused on God. Sometimes it takes a loving attention. And like we know for a hundred percent fact that God is all around us. We can feel it. We can taste it. It's almost like we can bite it. It's so real. We know that God is there and he's filling us. He's infusing us. And we literally can't do anything but focus on that. In contemplative prayer, you don't think a lot. You don't uh, try to reason. There's no images. There's no words. There's just experience, uh, a knowledge of experience that's really hard to explain unless you've gone through it. But you just know God's there. You know he's looking at you and you know you're looking at him and that's all. Other times it can take really powerful forms of extreme delight, uh, of enjoyable delights, like very peace, an overwhelming peace flowing from every pore of your body. It's very serene, but it's very real moving in you. It's not just a natural peace, like I feel good, I feel calm. It's a serene peace and it's infused throughout your whole body and you just know God is real. It also could take a form of loving awareness of God in the sense that he fills you with his love and you just feel overjoyed and bubbling over with his love. It could also be a dry desire where you just desire to know God so much. You really want to know God. You have this burning desire and yet you feel far from him. You just feel like you can't get to him. No matter what you do, you can't get to him, but you're burning, you're, so, you're desiring to be with him. That's actually a form of contemplative prayer. God is giving you that desire because he wants to fulfill it. God is giving you the desire because he wants to give you more of himself in his life and he's going to fulfill it if you keep following him. And in fact, the fact that you experience that means that you're on the right track. Sometimes you can barely feel the peace or the love or other times you'll just feel little glimpses of it. At other times it could be really extremely strong or even prolonged. It could even last uh, an hour or even a day or so. Uh, you know, once you get to the higher heights of prayer. And in fact, Father Dubé talks about this in his book, A Fire Within. Again, this is totally unmerited. You can't do it by trying to do a specific technique. You can't achieve it by trying to follow all the rules or trying to dot all your I's and cross all your T's and try to do everything just right, and then I'll experience God. No. God gives you the experience when it's the right time and when you are ready. There's nothing you can do to earn it. There's nothing you can do to keep it. So if God gives it to you for two seconds and it goes away, it's nothing that you did wrong, except for maybe that you're trying to keep it and you're snuffing it out in the process. But realize that God gives it to you and God allows it to you so that you can grow. And all of this contemplative prayer always comes with a deeper knowledge of God and a deeper desire to want to follow him, to give up sin, and you enter into a better place with God each and every time it makes you a better Christian. It transforms you and it leaves you more peaceful. This is contemplative prayer. I want you guys to practice quiet prayer, meditative prayer, contemplative prayer, just sitting before God out of great love for him. Even if you can't do it, even if you're bored, even if you're distracted, all the saints were distracted. St. Therese of Lisieux talks about when she was in a chapel once and she, this nun had this really bad habit of clicking and she just like clicked her teeth or her mouth or something and it aggravated her because all she wanted to do was focus on Jesus and all she could do was focus on the clicking. All she could do is think about what this nun was doing and it uh, aggravated her so much. So St. Therese actually uh, said, Jesus, I can't concentrate, help me. And so Jesus 
just left her there listening to the clicking. And she said, Jesus, it's no use. I can't do it. Okay, God, fine. I'll just sit here out of love for you, even if I can't concentrate. I will make a prayer of patience. And she did that. And it kept annoying her. And she said, oh, Jesus, it's useless. I just can't sit here patiently. I, I just can't do it. Please, God, help me. And it, uselessly, she said, fine, God. In the end, she said, I'll just make a prayer of suffering. I'm going to offer this up because it's killing me, God. But you died on the cross out of love for me. So I'm going to die here suffering out of love for you. I'm going to make this my prayer to you. So no matter what struggles, what temptations, what fears, what distractions you face, don't ever stop giving that time to God. Just keep going. And God will lead you to himself, which is his very heart. Thank you for listening to this. I hope you will employ it and practice it in your life. We have many more prayer principles and many more uh, helpful hints that will help you to go even deeper with God. So stay tuned for these future episodes, and we look forward to seeing you very soon. If you have good news, we expect you to want to share it. Salvation in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who for love of us and for our salvation came down from heaven. Salvation in His name, and He is the only Savior, is what we are on earth for. Therefore, all those who spread the good news of salvation in Jesus Christ, we should encourage them. I can speak, but how many people can I reach alone? But the media, the television people, the radio, the newspapers, and all those who use the computer and its derivatives in various ways to spread the gospel. We must thank them. We must encourage them. We must work with them so that they can continue to spread the good news. There's so much news that is not so wonderful in the world, but there is also news that is wonderful on the gospel of Jesus Christ. We encourage them and beg God to bless them especially the Shalom World TV. God bless you. Shalom World, God's own channel.